morning, Glory America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. I'm Hugh Hewitt. I hope you can hear me in Florida, in Tampa Bay, in Sarasota, in Orlando. We are thinking about you. We have got the report from the Orlando Sentinel about the damage done all the way across the state. Uh, the good news, it could have been worse if it had been even a little bit further north. Bad news, it's pretty bad. And so Food for the Poor is working with us, sponsoring a campaign to bring disaster relief to the people of Florida and a few shipments up to North Carolina now that the roads are back open. Hurricane Relief, the banner is over at hughhewitt.com. Please be as generous as you can. Fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I dug deep yesterday because it's a lot of people need a lot of help. They're doing a great job in Florida, and eventually they will catch up in the mountains of Tennessee and the mountains of North Carolina. We appreciate your helping us. The Give Relief banner is at HughHewitt.com. You cannot miss it. So yesterday, America, I was bothered by Kamala Harris, not by her policies, which are hard left and would be ruinous, not by her person. She seems perfectly pleasant. What bothers me is her grammar. And I began to recall high school teachers. Now, maybe you driving to work this morning or listening right now or watching on YouTube, maybe you don't remember high school. Maybe you don't remember K through eight. I actually can remember everybody except who my sixth grade teacher was. It's like a blank. Sister Mary Neal in fifth grade, and Mr. Santor in seventh grade, but I have no idea who was there in sixth grade, so I'll ask somebody. But I know everybody in high school. And you've heard me mention Ron Karenbauer before, the, the superb Latin and ancient Greek teacher. Fred Hoover taught American literature and English literature. Kathy Santusi, who said, there are schools other than Notre Dame, you know, and there are a lot of people. I don't think I've ever mentioned Mrs. Dennison. Mrs. Dennison was my ninth grade English teacher. She was my brother's ninth grade English teacher. Both of my brothers, Mycroft and Sherlock, ninth grade English teacher. She was the ninth grade English teacher at Warren John F. Kennedy High School forever. And her ninth grade English class was never different, no matter what year you took it. You diagrammed sentences all year long. The idea being that if we can put into your head how to diagram a sentence, you will be able to communicate and you will not, you must not use run-on sentences. Run-on sentences are those where the conjunction and or but continues the sentence and you're aware of it when you are a, a veteran of Mrs. Dennison's class. Can we put up the picture of a diagram sentence, Harley, for those who are watching on the Salem News Channel? This is a classic diagram sentence. Francis Petrarch lives, and it goes on. You can see it. It goes. You, you diagram down, 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 dependent clause, dependent clause, dependent clause. They're not good. I teach people in my law school classes to speak in short, direct sentences. Make sure you have a beginning and an end. Don't do run-on sentences. Most people don't communicate in run-on sentences. Most people don't use conjunction. Serious people who want to communicate spend their time crafting a message that can be digested. And I'm here to to illustrate for you that is not Kamala Harris. She cannot communicate. The vice president may have skipped ninth grade. Maybe, because Dwayne diagrammed sentences in ninth grade. Harley did not. So... Kamala Harris is a little bit older than Dwayne. So maybe they didn't diagram sentences in Montreal. I'd have to ask my friend Russ if he's listening. Was that part of the mandatory curriculum? Did you have to diagram sentences? Let me give you some examples. Let's go back to July of 2023 at the Essence Festival. The Vice President on Culture. Cut number one. Well, I think culture is, it it is a reflection of, our moment and our time, right? And, and, and present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. And, and we should always find times to express how we feel about the moment that is a reflection of joy because, you know, it comes in the morning. <laughs> 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 we, have, 
we have to find ways to also express the way we feel about the moment in terms of just having language and, and, and a connection to how people are experiencing life. And I think about it in that way, too. Uh, that might be two run-on sentences. It is certainly possible that it is one. Even if it is two, they are very difficult to diagram. Conjunctions are the bane. Dependent clauses are the bane. Let's then go to Louisiana, March 21, 2022, the Internet Accessibility Event, cut number three. And um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. All right. That is impossible to diagram. Let's go back an earlier year to 2022. This is uh, Kamala talking to the U.S. Asian Conference on Working Together, cut number four. Especially true when it comes to the climate crisis, which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on to galvanize global action. I don't know how to do that one. I tried. Can't do it. Let's come up to the Today Show, January 13th, 2022, cut number five. It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. Now, that might be two sentences. It might be neither of them particularly good, but it might be two, but I think it's one. Cut number six, Kamala Harris. This year in New Hampshire, cut number, it's very short, but it's complex. Cut number nine, uh, six. Let us understand which we do, our purpose at this very moment. Let us remember the broad shoulders upon which we stand and the traditions of this very fight that have led to what we have been able to accomplish. That can't be diagrammed. My ears are bleeding. Mrs. Dennison is rolling over in her grave, and she's a good woman, and I know she is with the angels, but she is saying, who is her ninth grade teacher? Let me speak to her. Cut number seven. Humor. Uh, but let's, let's take this one step at a time, understanding that right now, on the issue of energy, our allies have stood firm and unified in a way that many of the pundits didn't predict would happen um, to ensure that we are, we are unified in our approach to this issue. Let's talk. I, I, I don't know how to do that one. One more before the break. Cut number eight. The work that we have done has resulted in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. That, that cannot be made sense of. That's not an edited cut. They did edit. The CBS people laid down. Dwayne explained it on the air check yesterday. The air check is only available if you belong to the universe. He explained what they did on the editing side, and I would recommend it to you. It's worth joining the universe just to hear Dwayne explain to me how that 60 Minutes did this number. I do want to put on the record, I'm going to come back to more uh, Kamala Clips, because Kamala Clips is a category unto itself. I'm overwhelmed with the bad grammar, and I am convinced she could not have gone to a ninth grade where they diagram sentences. Now, if you take Latin and ancient Greek, I had five years of that, and then another year of Latin as an undergrad. You also learn nouns and declensions and diagrams. You know Latin is a structured language. But it has beginnings. It has ends. I teach my law students. I stop them when they say the word like, and, but. When they extend a sentence, when they are stalling, 
when they are word salading. I stop them. I tell them they will never persuade a jury or a judge if they cannot speak in direct, coherent sentences. You pause between sentences. You direct your talk at individuals. You have confidence and command of the language. That's not Kamala. More Kamala clips during the break and thereafter. Stay tuned to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt. Let me continue where I began. The death of the diagram sentence. I have a hypothesis. I do not know if it's true. I think Kamala Harris may have skipped ninth grade or high school in Montreal did not involve diagramming sentences. Because we're doing Kamala clips this morning on this Friday as we end Kamala Harris, no good, terrible, horrible week. And I'll talk about that with Ben Dominich in the next hour when we do our Week in Review segment. But it occurred to me after her Univision town hall last night where she did a sentence that I will end with, I can crescendo to it, that she actually never took a English class where she was obliged to diagram. Maybe it was in French. I don't know how French works. I know how Latin works. I know how English works. Let me bring you clip number 10 in the Kamala Harris clip file that I have on hand to demonstrate she does not know how to communicate. Cut number 10. We must together work together to see where we are, where we are headed, where we are going, and our vision for where we should be, but also see it as a moment, yes, to together address the challenges. That is one sentence, and it cannot be diagrammed. Let's go to cut number 11. This is the <clears throat> somewhat infamous Stephanie Rule interview from earlier this summer. Uh, the previous clip was in Paris. So the Parisian translator was truly at a loss. But this one, this is MSNBC and Stephanie Rule, cut number 11. Some of the work is going to be through what we do in terms of giving benefits and assistance to state and local governments around transit dollars and looking holistically at the connection between that and housing and looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can create for local and state governments to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner that includes prioritizing affordable housing for working people. In a, I don't know where holistically shows up. Would you put up the diagram picture again, uh, Harley? If we were to diagram that sentence, that's the most difficult one except for last night's. That one, I just would not know where to begin. Let's go to cut number 12, which has got non sequiturs and run-on sentences and an undiagrammable failure to communicate. Cut number we 12. We are an optimistic people. We are an optimistic people. Americans, by character, are people who have dreams and ambitions and aspirations. We believe in what is possible. We believe in what can be. And we believe in fighting for that. That's how, that's how we came into being. Because the people before us understood that one of the greatest expressions for the love of our country, one of the greatest expressions of patriotism is to fight for the ideals of who we are. I, I, one of the greatest expressions used twice complicates the diet. Now, some people on, in Kamala's camp will say that was four sentences, you, not one. Possible, the articulation of the four sentences is not easily discoverable, given that the vice president speaks like this, which never ends and always pauses, but when she keeps ending, ending in, and when I add in, and when she adds in, or both of us add in, the complexity of the sentence, the one about which we are referring, gets more difficult by the minute that we talk and don't stop and clearly communicate an end, if there is to be an end of that which we are about to end, which is a sentence that, a sentence that can be diagrammed. Let's go to cut number 12. This is Kamala Harris with Oprah again. Maybe I played this. Did I just play this one? I just played that. Let's go to cut number 13. Graham sentence, side of the road. There's no guardrail. 
uh, because she completely switches without ending a sentence. So she doesn't stick the point. Her reliance on dependent clauses and on conjunctions is is terrifying for ninth grade English teachers everywhere. Mrs. Dennison, God rest your soul, you would never have allowed me to do this. And Ron Karenbauer, I know you would never have allowed us to do this. But I don't know about Montreal. I just don't know. Let's do two more for you. Maybe three more. Cut number, well, let's do two more. Cut number 14. This is only in August in Pennsylvania. Cut number 14. Our election is about understanding the importance of this beautiful country of ours in terms of what we stand for around the globe as a democracy. As a democracy. We know there's a duality to the nature of democracy. On the one hand, incredible strength when it is intact. What it does for its people to protect and defend their rights, their liberty, and their freedom. Incredibly strong and incredibly fragile. All right. Because she ends with, and incredibly fragile, it complicates the entire process. There might have been two sentences there. It's very hard not to hear it as one, and it's impossible to diagram as one. Which brings me to what got me going on this. Well, yesterday, the vice president did a Univision town hall, and she delivered of herself a 58-second, it's a piece of work, it's an art, it's abstract, it's theater performance, it's it's amazing. Kamala Harris unbound, Kamala Harris unplugged, cut number 16. So my pledge to you is that by the grace of God and hopefully with your support as well, when I am elected president, I will bring back that border security bill and I will sign it into law and do the work of focusing on what we must do to have an orderly and humane pathway to earn citizenship and one of the biggest problems with failure to have a, a, a comprehensive plan for immigration is that we have not given them the pathway to earn their right to citizenship and that is again that is one of the the priorities for me frankly in terms of my motivation for what i know we must do and i think it's um, don't know if that is one sentence or two, she used and twice. Some people can write, and if they have an editor, as I have been blessed with editors at the Washington Post and Fox News and at every other prior place I've written, the old Weekly Standard, Mike Duffy is one of my favorite editors at the Post. He said, Hugh, you, you're a great writer. You always say everything twice. And so I have to go through your column and cut through. And I am. I am redundant. I am a redundant writer, but I'm a terrific speaker because if I want to close a sentence down, you know it because I put the emphasis on the end. That was one sentence. This is another sentence. If you have a student who is applying for college, you will encounter the dreaded college essay. The good news for the Fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I is that we no longer have to do those. And if you have two boys, and the fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I had two boys and one girl, but one girl did her own essays on her own by herself. We never saw them. The two boys had to be sat down in front of a computer and given prompts because they were boys. They're both superb communicators now, by the way. So it's not, it's not a lifelong disability if you can't speak in complete sentences. But it is a disability for the vice president because I can't listen to this for four years. Can you? I ask you, can you listen to this for four years? Because it's incoherence on stilts. It is the Hindenburg of rhetoric. It is an absolute train wreck. And those were four sentences. Mrs. Dennison, God bless you. You taught me well. Ron Karenbauer, God bless you. Eternal rest. 
Grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. It is so easy to learn how to communicate effectively. It takes some practice. She's almost 60 years old. She's been in public office for 16 years. She is allegedly a prosecutor. She worked at McDonald's. You don't use a lot of complex sentences at McDonald's. To my knowledge, I never worked at a McDonald's. I worked at, and by the way, this would have been, I'm using a complex sentence right now, a fine question. Madam Vice President, which McDonald's did you work at and when? Because I can tell you in brief every summer job I ever held, but it would also be an opportunity for her not to do a run-on sentence. I worked at McDonald's at 6th and Elbow Street in San Francisco. I worked at the McDonald's at Larder and Main in Oakland. She could answer that with one sentence and be complete and direct. Kamala Clips is a horror show and an obstacle course. It is a horror show for ninth grade English teachers everywhere. It is an obstacle course for whomever her audience is. Many of you will say, Hugh, you're missing the main point. She just, she wants amnesty. I'm not missing that point. We know she wants amnesty. We know she's a failure at the border. I'm making a point that even if you are a left winger, you can't listen to that for four years. You can't. You will be deranged. You will be in agony. Take the win. Get the Senate back in 2026, because if Donald Trump is president, you will run the map. Don't do this to us, please. I can't play Kamala Clips for the next four years, because I am bound by my contract to do.